the song is anybody listening has great importance in my life. And I'll get into that in a moment. But sometimes we got to say the name. Because in the church today, we have selective words that we call things. In Somalia, we use the word hunger, but they use the word starvation. In the Sudan, we say that they are a people that will perish, but they say that they are a people dying. A married pastor runs off with a secretary, and we say that he made a mistake. But this book that I read calls it adultery. A young unmarried girl gives herself to her boyfriend. And we say that she made a poor choice. But the same book calls it fornication. A man, a woman, a teenager, doesn't matter the age deal with the issues of life differently. I know that when I grew up, it was different. There wasn't the pressures that our young kids face today. And in that process of dealing with their problems and pain, they find a way to make it better. Some will call it self-termination. It sounds less aggressive. But we call it suicide. The definition of suicide is to kill oneself. The act of a human intentionally causing his or her own death. Suicide is often committed out of despair, hopelessness, depression. The pressures of life and misfortunes play an important role in their decision. Suicide is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. It's the leading cause of death in teenagers and adults <clears throat> under the age of 35. But each of them is a voice that cries out in the night. 22 years ago, I heard that voice as I was praying one night. And I said, Lord, what is that cry that I hear? He said, it's the voice of despair. It's the voice of help. Who will go? All of you have heard that voice. It's merely a voice that wants someone to come. But in a, at best, we say, I don't know how to help, but I will pray for you. And the voice cries out, don't pray for me. Pray with me. We don't respond because we don't feel qualified. But the hurting, we're not looking for qualifications. They're looking for those that are available to just to know someone is there. Valerie knew someone was there. 
But us in our lameness, we hope that maybe if we look the other way, it won't be there tomorrow. We look at suicide in, in the Bible. Several passages in the Bible about suicide. One of my favorites, 1 Samuel 31. Saul was the king of the Israelites and he took his army into battle and he got wounded. So he asked his armor bearer to run his sword through him so that the enemy wouldn't come and mock him and kill him. But his armor bearer wouldn't do it. So he took his own sword, Saul took his own sword and thrust it upon him. That's suicide. The New Testament example is the most popular one of Judas. Betrayed Jesus, couldn't live with the fact, hung himself. I had a dream not too long ago. And in this dream, I was at a conference, a suicide awareness conference. There was a greeter in the foyer handing out pamphlets and material and a young girl came in, maybe late teens, early 20s and said, I want to kill myself. And this lady said, oh, you've come to the right place tonight. We're having a conference and we're going to give you all the information that you need. This is your lucky day. The lady left to go greet someone else and the young girl went out, killed herself. A little later, a young boy came in, eight, nine years old. The same lady came up to him. The boy said, I want to kill myself. And the lady said, oh yeah, this affects even the youngest of children. She says, we have all kinds of information and speakers tonight that will talk to you and give you information. The young boy went out, killed himself. See, they wasn't looking for information, just looking for help. That voice that cries out, we think that what they need is information. And information is not bad. Yes, they need information. But when someone is that far in despair and their choices are minimized to death, they don't need information. They need a friend. They need someone that will listen. We need to go much deeper in the helping process than handing out a pamphlet. Oh, I believe the church wants to help. But you see, we in the church, we pray, Lord, send those in here that we may help them. And guess what? They're out there saying, Lord, send the church out here to help us. See, we have a problem with boundaries. That we have this mentality that everything happens inside the building. Not too long ago, I went with a man that wanted me to go with him to witness to the homeless. He's a good man, he's a good pastor. But he came wearing his three-piece suit, nice shiny shoes. We hit the corners and where the homeless hang out. 
and he wondered why no one was coming. And my other friend that tagged along dressed a little worse than me. Had a crowd of people he was talking to. See, they didn't identify with this pastor. We do that in the church. We do that with our music. There's a generation of kids that don't want our sweet by and by and our amazing grace. Beautiful songs in the church. But it doesn't drive them like it drove us. They march to the beat of a different drum. And if we don't give them that, they're going to walk out in the world and sell Terminator will have them. Do I like rap? No. But I hear the message. Do I like Christian rock? No. But I hear the message. Yeah. And if it touches one kid that walks in the door, it's worth it. Yeah. 